you say something. Good morning. Are you H.O.J.? Okay. I have these earphones on, but I only have one on, so I hear what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have a back music background, so in order to make sure it's perfect, you'll have these headsets on. All right, here we go. Only 97.5, and that's Foxy 97.5, WHLJ, Statenville, Valhusta, Georgia, Samia Caston, with WHLJ AM, 1400 in Montreal, Georgia. We are proud to have here on the special Fox Community Talk. Well, she is vying for the Laos County Chairman, Chairperson. None other than Mrs. Gretchen Quarterman, and I hope I got that name right. Yes, Gretchen Quarterman. <laughs> Well, I'd like to welcome you here to WHLJ. Uh, proud to have you here with us today. Thanks for having me. And uh, we are definitely proud that you uh, have taken our uh, invitation to come and talk to our listeners uh, that uh, we have uh, uh, here in our Lowndes County area. Well, I appreciate that people are uh, willing to listen to what I have to say. Well, a lot of folks that we have invited to come out, to for some reason or another, they have not showed up. So uh, that's why I said that. <laughs> We're glad that you took uh, us up on this. It's, I think it's important for uh, our constituents to know where the candidate stands and uh, a little background in regards to uh, the candidates uh, so that they know uh, they can uh, uh, decide on whether they want to vote for the candidate or not. A lot of times... Uh, we don't know uh, anything about the candidate, and if it's an incumbent, uh, most of the times the person will go with that incumbent. But in this case, uh, we don't have an incumbent. The incumbent that was there was uh, former Sheriff Ashley Falk, and he stepped down and decided not to run for the chairmanship again. So it is wide open uh, for anyone uh, to, uh, to to hopefully get it. And we're talking right now to, again, this is Corbin, President Corbin, and uh, she uh, is vying for that position. So, Mrs. Corbin, uh, uh, tell our listening audience uh, something about you, where you're from, and uh, tell us about your family as well. Well, sure thing. I uh, grew up in the Buffalo, Niagara area, and I married my husband, John Corbin, who's from Lowndes County. We were married here in Lowndes County in 1993 at his parents' house, and uh, after his father died, and uh, he inherited a piece of property. We moved back here in 2007. We have a farm called uh, Ochre Paradise Farms, and uh, our tag for our farm, farm is um, halfway between Atlanta and Orlando and all the way to Paradise, and that's really how I feel about Lowndes County. It's paradise here. Okay. All right. Well, now, uh, we, we, we just heard, uh, by the way, we just tuned it in uh, to this station. This is the Special Fox Community Talk here on WHLJ, and we have with us a uh, candidate for the Lowndes County uh, Chairmanship, uh, the uh, business Christian uh, Quarterman. Uh, uh, I believe Ms. Quarterman is a Democrat. I am. Uh, she's vying for the uh, chairmanship for Lowndes County uh, Board of Commission uh, Chairman. Now, uh, Ms. Quarterman, uh, tell us what made you decide to run for the uh, chairmanship for our position? Well, I've been going to the county commission meetings for um, about four years, and I've been videoing them for the last three years. And uh, when uh, Chairman Paul said that he wasn't going to run again, I thought that this would be an op excellent opportunity for me to serve our community. Our county government does a lot of things very well, um, but they do some things not very well. And one of the things that they do not very well is they really don't advertise what they do. Uh, people don't know what the services that the county provides are. Um, they're not very transparent or accessible, and I thought that I could make a difference there. Okay, all right. And in regard uh, to you uh, making a difference, uh, apparently by you, as you said, visiting uh, the meetings and uh, seeing some of the things that you feel like you, uh, that they weren't doing that you would like to see implemented. Uh, and I, I know this is a question as we talk about the project coming out that was going to come up, and that is this, this squash territory uh, with all of the inner cities within our area. What's your thoughts on this on this on this squash as far as the uh, projects is concerned? 
and uh, definitely the farms being dividend. Well, um, our local uh, option sales tax, we have several different taxes that we pay with a penny. We pay a local option sales tax, which is the loss tax, and that's divided between the cities and the counties, and it's divided at a, a ratio that's a, a complicated formula that, that the cities and counties are supposed to follow. Then we pay the SPLOS tax, which is the special local option tax, and that's the one we're going to vote on coming up. Um, and it has a variety of projects that the government's put in. One thing that I just found out about that recently is that those projects are prioritized. So there's Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3 projects. And then depending on how much revenue comes in, um, the projects are funded. So in the last block, um, one of the projects that was on there was a soccer field, and people were interested in having that, and they voted yes, but then the soccer fields never got built. Part of that is because the revenue that we got from the SPLOS coming in during this recession was much lower. So there wasn't money to fund all of the projects. So people really need to understand how that money comes in and, and that the municipalities and the county then vote on the disbursement of the money. Outstanding, outstanding. And that's something that we all uh, get. We, 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 we can never get enough education on SPLOS because, uh, as you just uh, kind of enlightened me on some things, uh, that, uh, that this one. Uh, has and uh, I guess it's similar to the uh, school board uh, squash that we have. Mm -hmm. that, exactly, we pay a penny. Things. We we pay a penny out for East Blast also to fund our schools and to make sure that they have good facilities and technology. So uh, yeah. Okay, outstanding. Now let's move right along. Uh, you are uh, vying for this uh, position, and by the way, if you just tuned it in to the station, we have a uh, in our studio today for the first time. Uh, this is a special Fox community talk we have with us today, uh, Mrs. Gresham Quarterman. Uh, she's vying for the uh, she's a Democratic candidate, and she's vying for the county chairperson, uh, chairman seat uh, on the Lyles County Board of Education. Now, moving right along, I'm sorry, the, the Lyles County Commission. Uh, <laughs> I, I have the Board of Education on my back because I'm a member of the Board of Education, the city school system, but uh, Mrs. Uh, Gresham Quarterman is vying for the vacant uh, seat on the uh, Lyles County Board of Commission. That seat has uh, been vacated by former sheriff Ashley Paul, who decided not to run again. Uh, so it's up for grabs right now, and she's uh, trying to fill that position. Okay, now in regards to you being on the on the uh, Lyles County uh, uh, Board of Commissions, there are different uh, departments that you have to work with, and one in particular I want to talk to you about. What's your thoughts on uh, public safety in our county? Public safety, as in the sheriff's? As in the sheriff's department, because that's the one that you most likely to be uh, assisting in uh, helping get financed. Well, um, the way that the county government works is that there are four distinct areas. There's the county uh, government itself, which uh, takes care of a variety of services, and then there's the tax commissioner, uh, the clerk of the court, and the sheriff. And those three people are. Uh, constitutional officers that are elected by our uh, community and, and they completely direct their offices. So the tax commissioner totally directs the tag, tag office and the collection of the taxes. Uh, the sheriff completely directs the uh, sheriff's office and the clerk of the court manages all of our uh, courts and all of the judiciary. So the county commission chairman sets the agenda uh, for the county commission County Commission is responsible for a variety of services, including uh, the 911 service, um, the libraries, um, in the unincorporated areas, the water and sewer and trash um, services. So uh, all of those groups then work together, and when you pay your county tax, then it's divided among those um, four entities. Okay, and, and, and still on the, uh, the constitutional individuals that run for those offices naturally, but they set their budgets, and you would be pretty much uh, approving those budgets now, is that not right? Well, the, it's not exactly uh, approving, but all of the uh, departments submit their budget, and there is a budget process. That's managed primarily by uh, Ms. Stephanie Black in the finance office. She collects all of the information from the uh, different departments and then uh, submits that budget and there, there's a budget review process that goes on pretty much from January until June when the budget gets approved. Um, 
the commissioners themselves are the ones that actually get to vote on it. The chairman doesn't get to vote. Let me ask you this. Uh, in regards to, again, we're still on the departments. Uh, and we'll believe this now. And this is coming to the city of Augusta, which uh, for the last several years, uh, the county uh, government, uh, the county government, I'm talking about you, mm -hmm. that we're saying you have been elected. Uh, by the way, again, once you, if you're just tuning in, we have with us today a uh, special guest on a special Thompson community talk. This is Gretchen uh, Corbin. Uh, she's here with us this morning, and uh, she's vying for the chairmanship uh, position on the Lowndes County Board of Commissioners. Uh, again, it was vacated by former Sheriff Master Paul. He decided not to run again, so uh, Ms. Corbin is vying for that position now. Uh, it has been a problem in the past, uh, Ms. Corbin, in regards to seems to be, I'm outside looking in, the problem with the county commission, the Lyons County uh, Board of Commissioners, working with the uh, city council and mayor. Uh, what would you do to try and bring some harmony there uh, for the good of uh, uh, our metro area? Well, I really appreciate that you asked that question. Um, I'm a very open-minded person, and I can work with uh, almost anybody. And... Um, our community is one community. We're not two communities or three or four or five. Each of the municipalities don't stand on their own. So um, I think that I have a good relationship right now with uh, the different uh, areas. I have been around with my video camera to uh, Lake Park and Ahara and Valdosta, and I, I know uh, the people that serve in those communities. And um, I think that I can get along and, and have open dialogue and discuss them. Outstanding. And uh, uh, before we close, as I said, you know, at the beginning, time really goes by when you're having fun. <laughs> in regards to, uh, again, uh, your position as the county chairperson, uh, uh, even though uh, you, you stated that you wouldn't have the uh, opportunity to vote, uh, but your leadership would be the almost important. Uh, yes. Talk to us uh, uh, in regards to the different uh, things that affects our, our citizens, uh, and that is, the first thing is, will you be available? You know, citizens need to talk to people that they put in office. And too many times, uh, I've seen lately, I thank God that I'm not one of those people that uh, my constituents have had a hard time getting in contact with me. Uh, will you be available for the constituents uh, if they decide to vote for you and uh, I'll put you in office? Well, I definitely will be. Um, my number one thing that I, I've been talking about on the campaign trail is transparency and making sure that people know what the government does, how it does it, and why it does it. Um, one of the things that uh, I've been really concerned about lately is making sure that uh, boards and authorities and, and information from those are available. You can get them from open records requests, but it seems to me now that we have technology that should make it so that these things are freely available. For example, the Planning Commission meeting minutes and agendas used to be available on the RDC website, but when the RDC stopped taking care of that and the county state started taking care of that, those minutes and agendas disappeared from the RDC's website and the new meeting minutes and agendas aren't available on the county's website. So if you're interested in the planning of this community and what happens at the Planning Commission, you have to file an open records request. You have to go down there and pay 40 cents or 60 cents, however many sheets of paper it is, to get that information. That just doesn't seem right to me. It seems now, like the government should be available. Now, and with you being the chairman, would you work toward changing that? A absolutely. In fact, all of the boards and authorities, the health department, um, the last time that the health department um, filed an annual report, they have to do it every year, but the last one that I could find online was from 2008. And our health department does really great stuff. They vaccinate students in schools for free. So, you know, we need to make that information available so that people really know what the government does for that. I'll send it. Well, folks, once again, if you uh, uh, just tuned it in, we have uh, with us today, uh, this is a special Fox community talk, and we have... Uh, as I guess today, this is Gretchen Portman. Uh, she's a Democrat and she's vying for the uh, chairmanship position that, once again, has been vacated by the uh, former sheriff of Lowndes County. That was uh, former sheriff Ashley Paul. Uh, Ms. Gretchen Portman uh, is here with us today. And again, uh,